Christina, thank you so much. Um, personally, one of the takeouts from that is I definitely have some German DNA in my roots because uh, I can connect to a lot of the things there. Um, and for all of us in the room, when we're thinking about that ideal German visit, we now have Christina to, 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 to think about. Um, great again to see the 20% growth that we've had in the market. Um, and I think the interesting point about Germany being the third largest um, uh, market for the island of Ireland talks about the opportunity that we have in Northern Ireland to try and convert more of those visitors to come north. Um, Power of Digital, whilst a little bit slower than some of the other markets, allows us to be visible um, and present, but making sure that our activity is not at the expense of the power of, of, of paper. Um, and I think really refreshing, travel is not a barrier. So the opportunity that you even have with coast is that even if you're not on the coast, it's all about the optics and how you can present yourself and your offer because Germans aren't afraid uh, to, to, to travel. Um, and again, I think one thing that's coming through consistently there is the opportunity to excel and delight with little tips like best kept secrets um, and being able to provide opportunities to meet with the locals. So thank you so much for that. Okay, we're going to move on to the North American market, and I'm delighted to have Alison Metcalf, uh, who is head of uh, uh, the North American uh, markets. Okay, thanks. Thanks very much, Anya, and uh, thank you for the opportunity to be here um, today. It's great to see so many new faces. Um, I've seen a lot of you at our marketing plans launches, but uh, really great to see some new businesses in the room. Um, what I'd like to do as I bring you back to the English-speaking world is to uh, talk about just a little bit about the, the market, the opportunity, the scale of the, the U.S. market, focus on uh, giving you a little bit more detail about what, what U.S. travelers are looking for, the two segments that we are targeting, and then just go into some of the products and experiences where we feel there are opportunities for you to uh, gain a greater share of this market, but ultimately to, to get Americans to uh, open their wallets. Uh, I'm not going to talk about a lot of the campaigns we're running. We're doing extensive campaigns, uh, and you can get more details of that online. So we'll be quite practical. So uh, first of all, I just want to sort of start off by saying that the US market remains one of the, the world's largest outbound travel markets. The, the resident outbound travel market in the US is close to 90 million people. Uh, and then when we actually look at the number that are traveling to uh, outside of Canada, uh, Caribbean and Mexico is 38 million departures. And what is interesting there, the 41% of that uh, 38 million are traveling to Europe. So Europe, the region of Europe is a, an aspirational destination for Americans. And last year, 17 million US citizens uh, vi visited Europe. But the most important point here, I think, is that one in 10 of Americans who are traveling to Europe are coming to the island of Ireland. So that is a very significant uh, market share opportunity for us. Um, the other point there, 74% of Americans, just based on our last brand tracker, are interested in taking a holiday on the island of Ireland. And Ireland is actually number seven on their list of considerations right now. So there's a huge opportunity uh, for us here on the island of Ireland. And from a Northern Ireland perspective, there's even greater opportunity because the ratio of Americans coming to, coming to Northern Ireland is not as high as it should be, but it's, it's getting a lot better. So give you a, a sense of the U.S. Uh, visitor to Ireland. Well, first of all, it's the, the number uh, two, it's the second largest source market for the island of Ireland in terms of visitors. It is now the number one market for holiday revenue. So it's a long-staying market. They, they, on average, stay about nine nights on the island of Ireland, and it's high spending. Average uh, spend is around 800 pounds uh, per visitor. 70% of Americans come to the island of Ireland are holidaymakers. And that has increased from 66% over the last few years. So an increasing proportion of, of Americans are coming here for holiday purposes, which obviously has most impact in terms of the economy. They're very region friendly. Um, they tra travel around two or three regions. They want to explore. They want to max out on their time. 75% are traveling independently, and 26% are traveling on a package tour. And within that package tour, around 59% of those holidaymakers um, are traveling on some kind of escorted tour with a guide. Very often an escorted coach tour, but it could be in a small group with a private uh, driver guide. So I just want to give you a sense of how the market is doing. And I'm, I'm putting this figure up here because th this figure is for the island of Ireland. 77% of American holidaymakers come to Northern Ireland from the Republic of Ireland. Um, so the sense of, of distance and access, uh, Americans don't think twice about you know, 
um, traveling a couple of hours for dinner. So they will be entering, most all, in all likelihood, through Dublin. So last year, we saw 2 million visitors from North America, roughly 1.85 million from the United States, um, and spending 1.6 billion um, sterling. This market has grown from 1 million visitors in 2013 to 2 million visitors in 2018. And as we, we head into 2019, prospects are looking pretty good again. If we look at the, uh, get under the skin of those numbers, the growth is coming, uh, particularly in the holiday side of the house. If we look to that chart on the right-hand side, we've seen an 18% increase in holiday makers, 19% increase in revenue, and 15% increase in holiday nights. So North America accounted for 60% of that additional revenue last year. And as I mentioned, um, the Americans are keen to travel around. They want to discover as much as possible. They're, they're known for maxing out on their time. But increasingly, they are traveling out of the peak period. And we're spending an, a, an increasing amount of time not only talking about um, the benefits of traveling, less busy, less expensive, we've got great access, but talking about some of the experiences and attractions that are available. So if you're a business, if you're an attraction, if you're a hotel, Think about um, you know, what you can do in quarter one, what you can do in quarter four. Think about um, when you're uh, putting content up on your website, things to do and see local experiences. Because as you can see from these numbers, we've seen 136% increase since 2012 in quarter one and 172% in quarter four. Quarter one is still the hardest um, uh, period to, to increase, but even this you know, March of this year, um, we, we expect to see a growth in Americans. So we are spreading the load, and there are great opportunities to, uh, to get people to, to, to come to Northern Ireland during those periods. Looking specifically at Northern Ireland, um, we've, we've obviously, we don't have any data for 2018 that's really robust enough to share with you, but if we look at the growth since 2011, we've seen a 65% increase in visitors over the last seven years. So again, whilst we had a sixth record year to the island of Ireland last year, we, we had a, uh, a record year in 2017 to Northern Ireland, we, and we will expect to have, uh, when the numbers are in a record year in 2018. And seeing that growth in the holiday make uh, numbers is, is really significant. So we are seeing, um, I would expect the visitors for 2018 to come in at around 220, 230,000 uh, Americans. Um, so it, it's a big market for you. So what's driving that market? Well, it's air access is a big driver, obviously. We've got 18 gateways now from the United States directly onto the island of Ireland. Uh, most of that access, more than 85% of that access, is coming into, into Dublin. So it's our job, working with you, to give people those compelling reasons to turn left when they come into Dublin Airport. Um, as I said before, Americans will drive a couple of hours for lunch, for dinner, they'll come back. They don't, their perception of distance is very different to ours. So the, every additional seat coming into Dublin is an opportunity uh, for us to get, get visitors to come to Northern Ireland. New gateways this year include Dallas. Uh, Dallas is starting on, on June the 6th, and we were down with American Airlines last week. Um, Dallas to Dublin, and also Minneapolis to Dublin with, with Aer Lingus. And we expect that uh, increase in gateways to, to continue. We've got 3% more seats this year, some access also um, into, into Shannon. So where, where are the opportunities? Where are the best prospects? Where, where are our visitors coming from? We're actually coming from everywhere. We've got pretty good spread right across the United States. But the, the highest growth levels are coming from the southern states, uh, which is the, the bottom right here, and also from the west coast. Uh, and again, we're seeing, we've seen a significant increase in air access now on the West Coast. We have Seattle, we've got Los Angeles, we've got San Francisco, we have Vancouver up in Canada as well. Um, that's obviously a big driver of that growth. But these are high spending visitors. So before I go into some of the opportunities that we see across different sort of sectors of, the, of the, the product, I just want to sort of summarize what the US strategy is for Northern Ireland, because it is different to some of the, uh, my colleagues uh, working in some of the, the European markets and certainly working in Great Britain. In the United States, our, we have one simple task, really, is to position Northern Ireland as a must-see part of the island of Ireland. Um, with the exception probably of golf, it is not really about selling Northern Ireland as a standalone destination. If it's the visiting friends and mar relatives market, absolutely, but for the pure leisure visitor, it's making sure that we can uh, drive increased visitation and, and get increased the, the amount of time that Americans are spending on that island of Ireland visit. 
So the ease of access from Dublin is about giving them those compelling reasons to, to, come, to come north. It's about exploiting the world-class golf, and I'll talk about, about that market uh, shortly. It's about increasing. We'd love to see more of you working with us in the marketplace. And again, uh, we have seen an increase in the Northern Ireland industry um, suppliers working with us in the United States. And again, I think what a lot of those suppliers that have, that have worked with us over the last two or three years, again, they're beginning to see results. They're beginning to see the benefits of having the opportunity to talk to U.S. tour operators who are working with us on some of those sales missions. They're getting us a much stronger understanding of what the market wants. Out of sight, out of mind, American uh, travel agents and American consumers, particularly the travel professionals who remain a very important part of our distribution channel, uh, they will reward loyalty um, and they will reward those partners that do uh, invest in, in marketing with us and, and, and marketing independently. Um, we're obviously continuing to work with the US tour operators to expand the amount of Northern Ireland programming in their in, in their pro tour series and in their FIT programs. Uh, I think Tina mentioned uh, for Germany, in the US, tour operators still remain a very important part of our, our business model. Uh, one third of Americans are booking through the tour operator some kind of trade channel. Uh, if you think about visitors coming from the West Coast and even from the East Coast, it's either 6,000 miles or 3,000 miles. The investment they're making in a vacation to the island of Ireland is quite significant. And because we are focusing on trying to drive an increase in revenue, um, they do put a lot of, um, of, of credence in working with a travel professional. They're willing to pay for those services to make sure they get the very best of, those, of, of experiences. And I'll talk about how you can reach some of, the, some of those, um, those parties in a moment. Um, we're obviously continuing to focus on group travel. We feel it's a big opportunity for Northern Ireland, and I think it's businesses here that can benefit from that, and leveraging the Scots-Irish heritage, uh, which again um, does still offer huge opportunities uh, for us in the United States. So when we look at what Americans are, are looking for when they, they come to the island of Ireland, what are those motivating factors that get Ireland on the, the shortlist? Well, you can see from this word cloud, it's all about culture, cultural attractions. Uh, they're coming from a unique Irish culture. And that can be expressed in many different forms. It can be through music, it can be through literature, it's through our history, it's through the castles and things like that. But that's the, the number one. Americans are uh, living in a very sort of relatively young country. They want something different that they can't find at home. They're coming for our countryside and natural beauty, the landscape particularly. Um, and again, the US is a big country. We do have two spectacular coastlines. But again, a lot of people are landlocked. So the, the coastal experience, the wild Atlantic way, the causeway coastal route, really, really important to them. Um, they want to go somewhere they've never been before, uh, and, and that is you know, really, really important. So again, this, these are the, the motivating factors for getting Ireland onto their short list. So when we talk about the customers we're going after, um, I just want to talk about two, two groups of people. Um, we call them segments, but these are really your, your customers. The, the biggest group is what we call a culturally curious traveler. This is a, a segment that Tourism Ireland uh, targets globally. And and the social energizers. These two segments represent about 64% of all holidaymakers uh, coming from the US to the island of Ireland right now. Um, so if we start with the culturally curious traveler, uh, essentially what they're looking at, they, they want to soak up authentic experiences. They want to engage with locals. They really want to, they want to learn, they want to immerse themselves, and they want to engage with the landscape. They don't want to be passive travelers. Um, because they speak the same language, they want opportunities to get involved. So anything that you can do to engage them, whether it's in the landscape or in, from a cultural perspective, they want to you know, learn to make um, wheat and bread, they want to learn to play a musical instrument, they want to learn to do something they, they can't essentially do back at home. They want that braggability piece. Uh, they don't want to follow the herd, they prefer to, to you know, uh, travel independently uh, and come back feeling sort of enriched as if they've discovered something new. What they want to feel is they want to feel connected to the place, they want to have their mind stimulated, um, and they typically are traveling as either singles or couples. From a demographic perspective, they tend to be slightly older. They're essentially the baby boomers, 45 plus, but um, increasingly we're seeing um, uh, a larger sort of subset are more, uh, coming from the 55, the mature, uh, mature market. If we look at the social energizers, uh, they do tend to skew younger, um, and they, they do certainly, the urban appeal of Belfast or, or Derry, London Derry can certainly be a hook for them, uh, more so than the, um, the, the culturally curious. But what is interesting in the U.S. is that the, the motivations, which, uh, the, the culturally curious and the social energized are coming for very similar reasons. Um, so those, those cultural motivations 
um, are pretty much the same for the culturally curious and for the social energized. It's just how they experience the product is differently. And that is different to other markets. The, the social energizers in the US are also older. Uh, they, they tend to be sort of 35 to 45, as opposed to that 25 to, uh, to 35 age group. So they want a fun-packed, they want a more of an action-packed itinerary. They're very social, they're living in a very hyper-connected world, so the way they, 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 they search for their information is also different, and I'll, I'll get to that shortly. They really want to be at the heart of the action. They, they really want to um, uh, have a busy daytime and a busy night. And so nightlife for them is more important. Nightlife is not important for the, the, the core culturally curious traveler. Um, and in terms of how do they travel, they tend to travel either singles or as groups of friends, um, couples as well. Uh, so I suppose one of the big market differences I would just sort of point out is because Americans are coming for longer, on average about nine nights, we need to fill a longer stay. We need to provide, um, they want a lot of options, they want to feel that there's a, a wide variety of experiences. And well, we've done research um, for, those, for those consumers that fall into these segments that are not current, currently coming to, to Northern Ireland or in, indeed coming to the island of Ireland. It's because they feel perhaps there's not going to be enough to do. They can understand what they might do on day one, two, and three, but how would they fill four, five, and six? So Northern Ireland can offer that opportunity for them to expand their horizons, to, to allow us to push them around the, um, the, in, into the regions by encouraging them to stay more than one or two nights. Uh, so if we can... If we can aim to get three or four nights out of that sort of nine or ten day trip, that I think should be a goal for all of us and we would be doing really well. So we do need to fill that longer stay. And again, just a, a, a bit more information here just on the, the culturally curious. Uh, again, um, what they do want to do and what they definitely don't want to do. They want to meet the locals, they want to explore the place, they want to uh, uh, experience things that are new to them. They want to enjoy the beauty of the landscape, and they want to get off the beaten track. They will tell you that they don't want to um, you know, do the, the, the bucket list attractions, uh, tick the box. They do actually want to do that. But once they've done that, they want to really get off the beaten track. And what they don't want to do, a bit like the Germans, they don't want to party. Um, they're not particularly keen on watching a sporting event. And they certainly don't want to interact with, with other tourists. And then on the social energizer side, as you can say, see from our latest research, I mean, the average age of, of US social energizers is, is 50. Um, now, we do get young. So our, overall, our audience does skew, uh, skew older. But again, age is not the determining factor. It is about you know, motivation. So they may be 55, but they're, they're 35 in their mind. They're, they're certainly very young at heart. So what do they want to do? They want to meet and have fun with other tourists. They want to experience activities with a wow factor. And for this audience, um, outdoor activities, again, uh, when you think, think of your, your hotel, your B&B, or if you are an activity operator, they're keen to explore uh, and to be active, not necessarily coming on a hiking holiday or a kayaking holiday, but they want to get a sense that there's, there's um, activities to do when they get here. And it actually also helps us when we, we, when we promote the destination. It gives, gives a sense that Northern Ireland is a vibrant destination. It's not just about sightseeing. Uh, they can do other active things if they want. Um, they do want to uh, experience things that are new to them. So again, this is, they're both fairly high spending. And again, like other markets, there's very little difference in the spend between the social energizers, what we call the social energizers, and the, um, and the culturally curious. Okay, so if we just look at the, the types of accommodation that they like to use, I mean, the US market is the largest user of hotels. It's primarily four and five star hotels. Um, you probably all know they love castles. So if you can anyway call yourself a castle, you're, um, and we know from our marketing, using the word castle really works with, with Americans. Historic properties, manor houses, and they don't, they, they don't have to be the five star castle. They just need to have character and a story because Americans just don't have this kind of uh, 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 product experience available at home. Um, they're also keen to look at um, interesting, unique accommodation experiences, whether it's staying in lighthouses or um, down at the bottom here we have Helen's Tower, or whether it's staying in one of the, uh, uh, the bubble domes at Loch Finn, if you can ever, or Finn Loch, if you can ever get a reservation. But they are keen to explore those unique accommodation experiences. Um, and they're very willing to mix and match. So again, what they would like to do is they want to have multiple experiences as, as they move around the island. And the accommodation experience can be a big part of that. I mean, they might stay in a couple of nights in a castle, then they'll go to a B&B, &B, then they'll go to a manor house. Um, they want to experience all different types of accommodation. And also the opportunity that, gets, that, that offers them to meet with the locals. 
The reason I put these, these logos up here, because if you think, if you're an independent uh, property and you think about, well, how do I access that market? How do I get more of that business? Uh, if you're a B&B, &B, you may already be a member of B&B &B Ireland. If you're an independently run hotel, you might be par part of um, the original Irish Hotels uh, Marketing Consortium or a member of Ireland's Blue Book. These, um, the, the, these industry associations and these marketing consortia are out in, uh, in North America, out in the US, constantly uh, marketing. So they are really your sales agents. As, as travel professionals want to plan itineraries right around the whole island of Ireland, um, the Blue Book and, and groups like this are working very actively and have their toll-free numbers. They, are, they can sell on your behalf. It's very difficult as an individual property um, uh, to get your message out there. As far as self-catering is concerned, it's not a huge market in the U.S. Um, it's primarily um, of interest to, to those people with family connections, uh, possibly multi-gen groups coming back for a family wedding. Um, some of the more, I suppose, upscale, unique um, accommodation rentals, such as, you know, um, in castles and manor houses, that's of interest. And if Americans are looking to consider that, they're probably looking for more of a, uh, uh, more of a turnkey service and, and, and a valet service. They're looking for a little bit more service than, um, than, than, than perhaps uh, regular self-catering cottages. So it is about service to accommodation. It is about mixing and match. There's an opportunity for everybody in the, uh, within these categories to, to win more business from, from the U.S., we are focusing on trying to drive revenue, and um, this market is uh, a huge contributor to holidaymaker revenue, as you've seen already. Uh, Americans will pay for um, great experiences. They are look, there's a, a, a huge growth in bespoke experiences. So what can you think of what you can do to get those Americans to open their wallets a little bit more? They're looking for value, but, um, but they will pay for something that is unique. So a VIP experience, a premium experience. If you're, if you're a, an attraction, is there something you, is there a differentiated experience that you could offer them? It's not simply about maybe jumping the line, uh, get, but can, can you do something sort of after hours or be, um, or can you give them a private visit? Um, just do something different. Just think about that and then, and then think about how you can market that. Private visits, private uh, access to um, you know, houses and gardens, uh, private homes. Um, again, some of the properties down in Fermanagh with, with you know, Crum Estate and Belle Isle and Barons Court. Those types of experiences um, are... The Americans love them. They absolutely love them. Um, getting behind the scenes and, and doing something a bit different. There is a market for that. It's growing. One of the, the biggest um, growth segments we're seeing is in um, private drivers. Um, again, some of the tour operators like Brendan Vacations, like CIE Tours, have now found a way to offer this, this product. So what this is is potentially, say, two couples. They get a private car and a driver, and they essentially do an FIT, an independent tour around Ireland, um, but with their own driver guide. It is now affordable to do that, and increasingly... Um, Americans are choosing to do that instead of maybe driving the car themselves or rather than they, they wouldn't be somebody that would be looking to get on an escorted tour but um, they still want to have that um, that, that driver guide and that, um, that local knowledge and I, I, I put this on the slide here local knowledge is key whatever business you're in with an activity provider a hotel provider accommodation provider um, uh, in, in the, the transportation business. Local knowledge is key. This is really, really where you can add value. Um, and Americans are looking for the story. They're looking for some interpretation wherever they visit a historic attraction. They're not looking for... Uh, they're looking for history light. They're not looking for a history lesson. Um, so, again, if you can give them nuggets of information, um, stories, give them uh, an insight into something that they might not have discovered themselves, they will feel they're really getting um, value. From that experience. And again, this has all about braggability. These are stories and moments that they will share when they get back to the US. Food and drink. Um, again, we've heard quite a bit about this this morning. Um, I was at Condé Nast a couple of years ago, and they were sharing some research about us, and they said that food uh, was the biggest currency in tourism. We all know that when we travel, we're looking for a good food experience. But I think it's probably one of the biggest untold story, although we're trying to tell the story um, in, in, on the island of Ireland. Um, it's one area that when we research with Americans, we ask them, you know, of all the things you expect to see in, in Northern Ireland or in Ireland, um, accommodation, scenery, friendly people, etc., what, what do you think 
your experience would be, how good do you think it would be on a scale of one to, uh, one to ten? And they're usually around eight or nine. When you ask them about the food, it's usually, ah, oh, it'll be okay, it'll be maybe six. When they come back, they're usually totally blown away. So there's a huge, huge opportunity here. And I think the, the year of food and drink in Northern Ireland really sort of um, proved that point. And I'm really pleased to see that we're going to have a sort of a taste of food festival on the island of Ireland later this, uh, later this year, working uh, with Tourism in uh, Northern Ireland and, and uh, Falcher Island. So really positive feedback, but I think, again, it's all about local experiences. They want to get involved because they do speak the same language. So again, it's telling that um, the story, the farm-to-fork piece, the provenance of, of the food. So again, wherever you, whatever business you're in, um, the food experience for Americans is not all about Michelin-style <coughs> restaurants. It is about having a really good food experience all the way along their journey, all, all around Northern Ireland, in the B&B, in the pub, in a great restaurant in, in Belfast or wherever, but just sharing that sort of uh, provenance piece. The food tours, the farmers markets, the festivals, again, Americans love those. Uh, and it's these types of um, experiences, these passion points that actually can get, you know, uh, can spark the interest of a consumer and that actually gets Northern Ireland or Ireland onto, onto the consideration set. Uh, and again, with the breweries and the distilleries, again, the, 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 there's really a whiskey trail now emerging in, around the island of Ireland, the boutique whiskey distilleries, um, I think there's 23 at last count. Um, so again, this is something which we just need to, 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 um, to, to dial up a little bit more. So think about how you can link into these things. On the group side, um, we see really significant opportunities for Northern Ireland. We've expanded our, our program of, of, uh, uh, of group travel marketing opportunities this year. In terms of the affinity groups that we're focusing on, uh, we're, we're, looking, we're working with a number of the um, educational establishments the, on the alumni side. We've joined the Educational Travel Consortium, and we were uh, at their consortium. Uh, their convention earlier this year, and again, we're working to convert some really good leads from, um, you know, we had from, from Yale and Boston College and Smithsonian. These are the types of institutions we're working with, um, and th these are the types of groups that will come and spend more than one or two nights in Northern Ireland. They will uh, obviously liaise with, with academic institutions here. Often it will still be an island of island trip, but they will spend three, four, or five days in Northern Ireland. So again, uh, much more benefit to the economy, and also there's opportunities with, with regionality there and seasonality. Uh, Faith-based tours, again, we're seeing good growth here. Again, we've been working on this for quite a number of, of, of years, um, as well, and, and also working with some of the performing bands and choral groups, and we've had, uh, uh, we had some um, choral group organizers and um, uh, directors on a fam trip just, just earlier this month. So these are all opportunities. So depending upon where you sit in Northern Ireland, um, this, these are opportunities that we are really expanding. The way to win this business, it's very much a B2B space, is to work with Tourism Ireland um, and, and Tourism Northern Ireland. Again, uh, we're working very closely with specialist operators that focus on, on in, in these particular uh, affinity group areas and also with, with group leaders. Uh, it is in, in the B2B space. And finally, so golf. Um, again, um, you probably know this, but the golf product and the, the, the golf experience for America is all about links. It really is the links golf courses that will motivate Americans to travel. If you have a good parkland course, they will, they will certainly play that when they're here, but it's not going to be the motivator that's going to get them to come to Ireland because the U.S. is home to so many um, signature parkland courses. But the links courses, the signature courses, Royal Port Rush, obviously, Royal County Down, um, as well as some of the hidden gems, which are becoming increasingly less hidden, like Art Glass and uh, Port Stewart and Castle Rock. This year is obviously a Massive year for Irish golf. We see, obviously, the promotion of the, the Open Championship uh, going, is going to fuel us into uh, the next five or ten years. We, we will be launching a campaign on the Golf Channel around the Masters. Uh, we're great to see a lot of Northern Ireland industry participation with us at the PGA Show, a lot of incoming media. Um, but in terms of if you're like looking to capture some of this business, it's generally booked through the, the specialist golf tour operator. Most of it is custom, and it's very high spending. So there will be people that will come and just play a bit of golf as part of their vacation in Northern Ireland, but uh, most of it is high spending, customized tours. Uh, they're spending on average at least twice what the average leisure uh, visitor is. And the 19th hole is really important. So again, there may be businesses in this room that think that maybe the golf market is not for me, but it can be for you in terms of the, the, the cultural experiences, the food experience, the, just the hospitality piece at the end of, uh, end of those rounds. Americans, again, will spend. They'll spend in the pro shop. They'll spend in the bars. Um, they, they love Ireland. And, um, 
we would expect to see this market grow, um, although we, we do recognize there are capacity constraints around some of the, the signature courses, so uh, I guess that will have to sort of work its way out, but it is about links. Scots-Irish connections, um, 22 American presidents claim um, Irish ancestry, and 17 of those 22 claim Scots-Irish ancestry. Um, everybody from Andrew Jackson to Woodrow Wilson, um, as well as some of the more, most, more recent presidents, not the current presidents, I have to say. Um, but a lot trace their ancestry back to Antrim, to Tyrone. Uh, there's an opportunity here, I suppose, from the ancestral heritage piece. We're, we're trying to um, use this to reignite um, uh, uh, Americans' interests. So there's a presidential link. There's 33 million Americans with Irish uh, ancestry. About 10% of those actually self-identify as Scots-Irish, primarily living in the southern states. So for us, it's not about just saying, isn't it nice? You, do, you, do you realize you're from Northern Ireland? It's actually saying, do you realize that? And this is a, it's a great opportunity. Would you not like to come back and, and explore where your ancestors uh, came from? So it's trying to sort of commercialize, kind of monetize that opportunity. I think that uh, on the ancestral side, I mean, there are some uh, good tools and resources there. I think there's probably, we've been working very closely with, uh, with Tourism Northern Ireland and Rosemary and the team and Anya there. Um, this opportunity, I think, to, to cluster those experiences. When people land, what is the, the trail? What is the Scots-Irish trail? Um, you can go to the Andrew Jackson homestead, the Scots-Irish festivals. What, how do we bring it together into something that is really kind of tangible? Um, and how do you work together um, so that when people land, they know exactly what they're, they're going to do and see? And uh, some pictures there of the Stone, Island, Stone Mountain Highland Games where we, where we work with some of the Ulster Scots agencies and uh, genealogical uh, partners uh, on an annual basis. Game of Thrones, um, the U.S. is the largest audience for this show. Um, there are 13 um, uh, million U.S. fans, so we'll obviously be uh, capitalizing on this um, with, through the global social media campaign. Uh, again, a huge opportunity. Um, this has really put Northern Ireland on the radar screen of so many Americans. And it's really interesting to see it's not just leisure travelers. This is also a big hook for incentive groups. We're, increasingly we're seeing uh, incentive business that uh, wants to come to Northern Ireland to make sure that they have, they want to include a Game of Thrones experience. So in terms of attracting U.S. travelers, uh, as I mentioned, the tour operators remain a really important part of our business. About a third of business is coming from the tour operators. You'll have a good opportunity for those of you who are going to meet the buyer. Uh, we have 35 U.S. tour operators coming to Northern Ireland, which is, I think, the largest number ever. Um, and, and within that group, we have five or six new operators. Um, and again, we're targeting operators that we feel have upscale um, high spending clients to drive revenue. So again, um, really important. The OTAs um, clearly are a big part of our business. Direct, um, again, 33% of the business is coming through, uh, uh, through the, tr the trade, but you know, 70, 70% is not, and that is where we're seeing significant growth. And continuing to work with Tourism Ireland and Tourism Northern Ireland, um, making sure that um, you know, you're participating in those agent fan trips, um, we would say, send a lot of agent fan trips over uh, during the year, making sure you're part of those publicity programs in the same way that some of the other colleagues have talked about. We send 200 journalists to the island of Ireland, more than 50 to Northern Ireland, um, and we're generating 50 to $60 million of coverage for Northern Ireland in the US. So it's a huge, huge opportunity. Um, and we also see because only 26% of Americans are repeat visitors. So we see an opportunity there, and we see Northern Ireland is offering that opportunity to bring um, Americans back to the island of Ireland to see something uh, different that they haven't seen before. So I'm just going to finish up with some of the, um, the sources of information that Americans are looking. When they first start thinking about a holiday, it all starts with search, all starts with Google, no surprises there. But if you th when you're thinking about how you reach the market and some of those direct channels, you know, if you have search campaigns out there, make sure you, you optimize those and make sure you're there. The review sites, TripAdvisor, Word of mouth is still probably the biggest um, motivator, particularly for the culturally curious traveler. Over 50% of our travelers, um, the US tra travelers, uh, are inspired through word of mouth, talking to friends and relatives, colleagues, both on and offline. Um, and when they're looking for inspiration, they're also looking for the, the value piece. And we did some research last year on the path to purchase. So they're looking at what they might do. Does Northern Ireland offer a destination that meets with my interests and needs? And also, roughly, how much will it cost to get there? Um, so they do want to get sort of a sight line of the value piece uh, before they uh, invest more time in finding out more about the uh, planning a trip. 
Uh, again, from the same research, if we just look at the information um, sources that are used by, by Americans, uh, I mean, top right there is the, you know, the, uh, uh, the most frequent majority of the sites. So it's all about Google, Travel Zoo, um, travel, uh, all the OTAs there, particularly that's on the deal sites. Um, Again, booking. Those at the top half are the sort of the majority of the sites, and then some of the the, the more emergent um, uh, platforms there on the bottom right, particularly referenced by some of the um, the, the, the social energizers, that younger younger traveller. And if you're interested in working with us, I would say um, the U.S. is a long haul market. You need to give it a three year commitment. Um, uh, don't I uh, don't come out and. and for one year and come back and say, you know, we didn't get any business there, we're not going to come again. I think if you talk to other uh, colleagues, and we, we're more than happy to connect you with, with other partners if you haven't been out, uh, other businesses that come from Northern Ireland, those that have stuck with us for three years have really sort of um, beginning to see, not only beginning to, but getting good business from this market. And there's a whole variety of opportunities. There's our B2B sales missions that go into about a, a dozen cities throughout the year. Um, again, these are targeting upscale travel professionals. Um, <laughs> You also get an opportunity to meet with U.S. tour operators on those, those trips, as well as media. So uh, really valuable opportunities. But there are also a lot of no-cost, low-cost opportunities. So again, if you, if, if you feel that you just like to sort of test the water, think about participating in some of our webinars. We do them on a monthly basis. There's no cost. Uh, they focus on different types of travel. It could be off-season travel. It could be culinary tourism. It could be Northern Ireland. Um, again, connect uh, with the trade team and through Geraldine, uh, you can participate in those. And if you're on a sales mission, this is a good thing to do in between uh, having been out in the market just to keep yourself you know, front and center. Also, lots of e-zines like other markets. Uh, we've got uh, a variety of databases that target different uh, segments of the, the leisure market. Uh, and again, all of those are free. So if you've got offers, you've got content, uh, we're more than happy to, uh, to promote those. And again, just finishing up here, just again, just to keep in touch with us, uh, Travel Tourism Island uh, opportunities, research and, and insights, all of these, these uh, tools are, are, I think, are great, uh, great resources for you, to, for you to access online. So thank you again for your time. Uh, we look forward to uh, working with, with more of you. If anybody has any questions afterwards, I'm more than happy to, to take them. Thank you very much.